Talk to us about how yourself uh, and DBS is providing or trying to provide leadership in terms of being uh, ESG uh, compliant. So, you, you know, what we do, uh, Martin, we've got a whole uh, uh, sustainability agenda that includes uh, uh, the first pillar of that is what we can do with our clients in the nature of our banking activities. The second is what we can do in our own business, our own carbon footprint and our you know, various policies and so on. And the third is what we can do with community at large, uh, social enterprises and companies who approach a dual bottom line. Uh, on the first of those pillars, we actually uh, look at uh, three things again. The first is well, how do we put our capital to work? Uh, not just loans on our own books, but also capital raising in the capital markets for our clients. Uh, we look at uh, industries we want to do more of because their business models are more carbon friendly or companies who are already uh, running lower carbon business models. But equally, we look at uh, those industries and companies where we think uh, uh, the carbon use is inefficient, and we try to scale down our lending and our activity in that in the oh. first instance. Uh, what we do most importantly, however, is we help, try to help companies transition from what I call brown to light brown to light green and to green. We have a transition finance taxonomy and framework. And so we work with companies to help them down a path so they can make their business model less carbon intensive. Uh, like I said, we also do a lot of green bonds. We do um, social bonds. Uh, we've done all kinds of renewable, geothermal, sustainability linked activities and so on. So there's really capital raising. On the other end of the spectrum, we work with our investor clients. We just talked about it. Uh, wealthy clients, private banking clients, institutional investors, to provide them a host of ESG-linked products that they can invest in. Today, 40, 40, 41 percent of all our uh, investor clients uh, are already investing in sustainable products. So creating an appropriate suite of products is important. Uh, I um, overheard the question you asked the finance minister a little while ago, and you know, how do you make sure these products are indeed kosher? And I think the finance minister had it right. I mean, the measurements are not impeccable. Uh, there's a lot of uncertainty, and I think uh, the world will take some time trying to get to a common understanding of what is really green. But okay. we tend to follow the indices. So MSCI has an ESG index, and we say if you're triple B or better rated on that index, we will uh, accept the fact that there's probably a good ESG investment. So we build a lot of products around things like that. We also bring bespoke, build bespoke products of our own. Okay. And in the third category, we work with the retail clients. So we've, we've got a green card. We've got a green auto loan. Uh, we do um, financial inclusion for people, you know, migrant workers in Singapore. We're trying to do democratizing wealth for the Robin Hood class of customers to give them financial planning and retirement tools. So this is essentially to address the S of the ESG. Um, and finally, you might have noticed a month ago we launched a carbon exchange. That's really a belief that all of these ESG strategies will also benefit from some infrastructure solutions. And so if we yeah. can participate in creating the right infrastructures, we might be able to get some good business as well.